Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg outside the studio here with one of my favorite dudes of all time, <laughs> Jeff Doslick, Fitchrona EMS. Jeff, how you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Beautiful day. It is a beautiful day, and that's why I wanted to get out here and take a tour. Take a tour of a car you may not have heard of before. Car one fiver. Yep. Car fifteen. <laughs> car fifteen. Hey, we gotta set this up, Jeff. Come on. Right. right. Uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, a, a multi-purpose vehicle, as right. it were. Uh, and you're going to give us the grand tour. Sure. And we probably should have not picked the back because this is the all-star area. Right. But uh, let's start with just quickly, what is Car 15? So Car 15, we use Car 15 for a couple different reasons. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we can use it as a quick response vehicle. So a lot of times when the primary ambulance in Fitchburg or Verona is out on a call um, and another call comes in, we can jump in Car 15 and respond and, and be there quickly. Uh, we've had a couple of examples here in Verona where we've gone to chest pain calls and it's either Patrick or I or, I, or both of us and we've started 12 lead notification right away. Um, so the goal for that is 10 minutes and if we can get there in five and start treatment, that's worth it. So that has happened. Uh, the other reason we use it is we use it just for training. Um, we use it you know, to go to different classes, uh, meetings. Um, the crews use it to get around to do some of the community paramedic stuff. And then um, we can also use it as a supervisor vehicle for things like the Verona, you know, we had the Verona crash out on the highway um, as medical group supervisor, um, you know, just as in a supervisory role. So those are some of the reasons. And it can go down the trail. So if we have something on the trail like we had last year um, where the ambulance can't get down there, we may be able to drive down there and do a quick response before the fire department gets there with their gator. Yeah, this vehicle is full of... Uh so many great stuff. I'm just excited. I'm an EMS Me too. guy, so I, of course I'm going to be excited about this. But uh, take us through what uh, what we've got here. Uh, let's, let's, let's open all these bags up. Come sure, on, let's do it. Let's all right. Do this. So in this compartment right here, uh, so just a couple things. So the the it has um, what we call the the intermediate or IV tech. Uh, advanced level care so it doesn't have all the paramedic drugs but it has the basic stuff that we can get started so we'll just start at the top um, of course we have our, our reach a child bag so for those kids that may need some uh, comforting while we're on the call uh, reach a child has always been there for us um, in this bag right here we do have a, 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 a triage type kit where um, I don't know if I can open up the big side of it here but um, we can uh, pull triage tags out of here um, we can put glow sticks, so a lot of times we'll use those to, uh, especially if we're in like an active shooter, if that's places in third, triage ribbon tags are in there. So just quick stuff for us. Um, seat collars, uh, suction machine, gloves, all of those, those things that um, we use all the time. Uh, mobilization stuff, we can use it as, as well. Um, get in there. Down below, um, we have our airway stuff. We have, uh, I think this is the drug bag. Let me help you out with that. Yeah, thanks, right there. <laughs> uh, so our, you know, as an advanced level care, um, we can start IVs, we can give dextrose, we can give some Benadryl for allergic reactions. We have the Epi, um, you know, we can do some just basic splinting, some basic airway stuff. Um, emergency blanket and if somebody decides to have a baby we can also help them with that <laughs> well car 15 can do a little bit of everything that's then, right huh? all purpose um, on this side over here we do carry um, and they're kind of heavy but we do carry uh, bullet uh, ballistic vests in here so if for some reason we get into that situation where we need to protect ourselves active shooter or any type of assault type call we can throw those on as well uh, Airway bag, kind of the first in. Very colorful. Very colorful, yes. Bag valve mask, um, the tourniquets and the stop the bleed stuff, um, quick clot, things like that. And then uh, just some basic bandaging stuff where we may not need to take all of the trauma stuff in, but we need to wrap up an arm. Just got to peek inside there. Oh, that's where the stethoscope is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get curious after a while there. Uh, we do ha we do carry um, a monitor on here as well, so we can do defibrillation. We can, like I said earlier, we can start the 12 leads. 
Um, we have tarps if we need to do tarps. If we have mass casualty, we can lay those out or uh, things that we can carry people with. Um, we do carry a uh, backboard in here as well. So for example, on the call we had out on the trail last year, we were able to put the, you know, respond quickly, get the person on the backboard, uh, put them on the gator and carry them back. So uh, it does come in handy. You could use this vehicle to get the person out of the element though. So if your resource wasn't there, you're ready to right. move, you can, it's built to, to take a patient. Right, it's built to take a patient. To the ambulance. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we won't train. You show up to the hospital, they're going to ask some questions. Yeah, unless, <laughs> unless something really goes bad in the county, this won't transport a patient to the hospital. Um, and then, you know, the result of the, um, well, the active shooter training that we do, and we do a lot of that with our police departments. Um, and our fire departments, uh, Fitchburg Fire is kind of a leader in that as well. Um, we do have the, the uh, first in kits for, um, for those active shooter incidents where we can take this bag, if we're going in, just throw the bag in the corner and then any responders going in there or if there are you know, civilians that need it, um, it has a tourniquet, it has you know, some quick clot stuff in there. Um, so scissors, things like that. So this was provided um, by the, I think it was by the, uh, the Trauma Council for Wisconsin, one of the RTACs, um, provided a bag for each of us. And then we also purchased additional stuff so that all the ambulances have it as well. I think it's a good thing you say this vehicle not only can be your first responder vehicle, if you will, but it can be a support vehicle to multi-casual. You had mentioned the Verona, uh, the, the large scale traffic crash that happened in Verona earlier. Um, how did this vehicle become that kind of that centerpiece, if you will, of, of your response? Sure. So we, when, when I responded out there in the, in the car, um, it allowed the ambulance to do their triaging and it allowed them to have a contact person that had some medical background to relay that information back to. So with the radio and the portable stuff that we have, um, it, it's as a supervisor, I can take or Patrick can you know look at the the whole scene as a whole from a medical perspective um, and and just be in charge of that section and having a car out there having car 15 or next year hopefully heavy car 16 out there um, we would be able to be that contact person and and sit in here and have radio traffic and not have you know people running around the scene so um, it was, it was a, it's a good supervisor vehicle to go out and do that um, and it, you know, if we have incidents where we need multiple people on scene, lift assists or whatever the case may be, um, with Patrick and I manning this car either together or individually, um, it does give us extra hands out there and, and some supervisory capability if necessary. And resources is the name of the game in the uh, uh, public safety world. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll continue our tour next with Jeff Doslick. Stay tuned, you're watching Talking Fitchburg.